Well, my power went out again last night, so I uh, prioritized my massive battery pack project I've been working on. So what I'm doing is making, people call these a solar generator. I kind of disagree with that whole uh, name for these, but that's what the common name for them is. Basically, it's a big box with a big battery pack and an inverter in it and a solar charge controller if you add one. That's all it is. Big battery pack. So for the battery packs, I'm using recycled 18650s, and I've just configured them into a 4S20P pack, which is about a 40 amp hour battery. So this is what I'm using for my power. These are pretty cheap if you redo the cells yourself. For the box, I'm just using this Craftsman box on wheels. It's got like a nifty handle thing that comes out so I can wheel it around because this thing's going to be heavy. There's the part number and size if you want to use the same one. I looked at a bunch of these in the store at Home Depot and Lowe's and as far as cost versus strength this was the best one I could find. Also if you've never wheeled around something heavy like this you want the biggest wheels you can find. There was one at I think it was Home Depot and the wheels were real small they were about a quarter of that diameter you're going to have a hard time wielding those over uneven ground or over thresholds or anything like that. So this is the box I decided on. For the charge controller, I'm using one of these. This is a 40 amp controller. I'm using some of these on my solar system. This is one of my spares. So these work. They're pretty good and they're not too expensive. For the inverter, this is from another project that I've taken apart and not used since then. So I've got some wires connected to it already, but it's one of the reliable 3000 watt 12 volt inverters. And I've ran air conditioner off this, a window unit for a whole summer. So definitely works. These things are pretty good. I'm using the 48 volt ones now, which is why I've got a spare 12 volt laying around. So right about now, you're probably asking yourself, I don't care about this crap. What do I need one of these things for? Well, let's say your power goes out for a day or two. You got some projects you got to work on. You want to use some of your power tools. Power tools will plug right into this. You can charge it all. So it's a handy way to keep a bunch of spare battery power around. It's also portable. Uh, if you put a solar charger in it, you can connect it to a solar panel. So you can get power wherever. You can be working out in the middle of nowhere, building something, and you have plenty of power to charge all your tools. So one of the additional reasons I want this is when my power goes out, I've got no way to get water and I've got no way to get internet. Those are like the two things you need. You need toilets, you need internet. So with this thing, I can wheel it over to where my modem is in my house, and I can plug my modem right into it. And with these batteries, it'll run for probably a week without charging it, but I can run a line out the window, charge it off solar. I can also run my well pump, which I have a backup 12 volt well pump, and I can run it right off this box. So all I gotta do is wheel this over to the well if I need water, and again, I can just charge it off solar if it powers out for a day or two. So that's the reason for building these. And you can make them as big or as little as you want. Uh, there's some commercial units. For the cost, if you can build it yourself, you can build one that's two to three times the size for the same price. So that's why I'm building this thing, so I can have some portable power that I can recharge with solar if I need to. Right now I have a solar system that I use to run heat and air conditioning mostly. And it's great, but it is not portable. It's in a 4x8 shed. And it's just, you can't move that thing around. You can run extension cords from it, which I do, but this will simplify things a lot. And I can take this off the property to anywhere I need to work on something. Putting together the basic layout for what I'm gonna do inside the box here. So here's the same battery pack I showed you earlier. Just got all my wires soldered on and it's shrink wrapped. So if I configure it down in the bottom like this, it looks like I can fit three of them stacked like this. I could put foam padding all around these. Since this is mobile, I want everything insulated really well as far as vibration and any impacts it could have, dropping off the truck, something like that. So three of these will give me about 140 amp hour battery. So the next step is to install my bus bars, and I've used these before. These are just salvaged parts. So I'm going to put two of these, one for positive, one for negative. I'm going to bolt them. I think I'm going to do one there and one back to back like that. Then on that shelf, I can install the inverter about like this. So that way, installing it on a shelf, I can cut an opening in the box for this section right here. I can reach my switch, I can see my displays, and I can have my outlets. The only thing I'll have to modify is this sticks out, so I'm gonna try to 
disconnect all this and maybe put these wires inside or see what's in there and maybe just disconnect all these wires. As you can see, they, they kind of stick out. So this will be flush with the box. That'll be dangerous. So I gotta do something about that. And then on that same shelf over on this side, I'll put my charge controller, whichever way I have space. I know I'll have space this way. I wanna put some cooling fans in here also. And right here is gonna be a good spot for a cooling fan and probably one down closer in the battery compartment. Then to operate the cooling fans, I bought these. These are little temperature sensor relays. So you can set a preset temperature. You got little buttons has a relay built into it, so it'll turn little cooling fans on and off when the inside case temperature reaches whatever set point. They've got a little thermocouple, so I'll probably mount one directly to one of the battery packs, and that should give me a good idea of when the fan needs to come on and start working on some kind of a shelf for in here. I dug through all my stuff in the shed, and this is what I came up with to make a shelf out of. So this is 5 8 thick UHMW plastic, so what I can do is I can drill through the side of the case and I can drill and tap into this and just hold it with a perimeter of screws like around the edge. So because of the shape, I'm going to have to cut two pieces, one there, one here. And I'm going to cut it around. I'm leaving all these little ribs. You don't want to remove any of these ribs out of your box. These add strength to it. So I'll set the shelf right where this transition is. It's about a good spot. Gives me about a two inch gap above the batteries and it gives me plenty of space for my inverter at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this out and chop it up with a jigsaw. So there we go, that's the basic trimming. I'll keep trimming a little bit and make my second shelf and I'll come back when I'm ready to attach it to the box. All right, shelves are all trimmed up and slid down in there and you can see where we're going with this a little bit better now. So I have my inverter here coming out that side. So I have a charge controller, my breakers for the charge controller, one for the panels coming in and then this one going out to the battery pack. So that way I can disconnect anything if I need to. So everything's got plenty of space. I've got it sitting far enough off I can mount a fan there or wherever I need to. So I need to notch where these are gonna sit down through here just to give it an opening. And I was a little bit wrong about my measurement. I thought I was gonna have a gap here, but it was actually the exact size. So it's just a standard 24 inch box and this is 12 inch plastic. So worked out pretty good. So now I gotta measure down to the edge of my plastic in there, drill through the box Screw that in. All right, so now I got both my shelves attached with those perimeter bolts, just drilled and tapped right into this. That's why it was nice to have a thick 5 8 piece. Cut some clearance out and mounted my bus bars over there. Okay, so I pulled the cover off my inverter to see what I could do about this piece that sticks out. And then what this is for is if you want to do a hard line connection to the inverter, you can connect it right here, but I don't need that and I don't want this sticking out. So I'm going to remove it so that this can sit flush with the edge of the box. And that gives me two advantages. One, I get all my controls right on the outside of the box. And two, these are cooling vents on the front of this. So it'll be able to suck outside air in. And then on the back of the inverter, there's two fans for exhaust. So this will blow outside cool air into the whole case and then it'll exit through the openings I'm going to make in the case. So it looks like all this is, it's just got two little screws holding it on and then it has these three wires that run over here and these are quick disconnect type connections so I should be able to just unbolt this, unplug the wires and it's gone. Pulled that little connection off as easy as I thought, pulled the wires out, they just unclipped. So now I'm ready to cut my hole for the inverter so we can 
mount everything. I'm doing the inverter first because that's the piece that is most important in regards to position where it needs to be flush with that edge. So that's going to determine my space all around it and back. That's the first thing to mount. So I'm just going to center it up here. Then with my marker, I'm going to mark my edge. And you can see on the inside here, I've got my cut line. So I'm going to use my drill and I'm going to drill the corners. And then that way on the outside, I can use my marker on the outside and use the jigsaw to cut the straight lines. Let's show you a little bit better what I meant. So I drilled from the inside these four corners and then I just connected them with a straight line. So that way I can just cut on the outside because it's easier to saw from the outside. Now I have this little lip up here, which should give me a little bit of a rain shield for the outlets. Not that I plan on this being waterproof, but if for some reason it's caught in the rain, this will help a little bit with rain and water. Now that the inverter's mounted, I can go ahead and mount the rest of my components over here in this space, since I know where all my gaps are. So my charge controller, I'm gonna mount right up in there. And it has these nice little tabs on the side, so I can just bolt it straight down. Then my breakers for my solar input and my charge controller to battery are DIN mounted rail breakers. So all that is, this is a DIN rail, it's spelled D-I-N, it's an abbreviation for something, I have no idea what. But these are kind of a quick detach uh, industrial type thing. And you can get all different type of DIN accessories, you can get breakers like this, you can get fuses, you can get relays, you can get all sorts of things. And all they do, they clip on one side, and then on the other side, there's a little spring loaded piece so it just snaps onto the rail like that. And now it stays on there. And to remove it, all you gotta do is use a little screwdriver, grab these little plastic spring-loaded pieces. You can see they kind of move up. You gotta do both at once so it's a little tricky. But you just pry both those and you can move these around. So I'm gonna position these so that my wires will feed basically directly into my controller there. All right, now I'm ready to start connecting all my wiring. Need to mount my solar panel input somewhere. I don't have a flush mount one yet, so I'll probably just drill a very small hole and have just a quick connect for now. Run into one of these breakers, breaker to the charge controller, charge controller to the other breaker, then that breaker back around to my bus bars. Wiring's all connected for a charge controller to bus bar. So now I'm ready to connect my battery and test my charge controller circuit. So before I connect my battery, I wanna make sure everything is dead over here. So both these are switched to off, but what I like to do whenever I'm using new components is I like to test them. So set your meter to ohms, which is resistance. And there's nothing, nothing there. Now with the switched on, I have a connection there and a connection there. And then one other thing I like to check is to make sure there isn't any kind of cross connection. Sometimes you'll read a small amount, like right now I'm reading four milliohms, and most of that's just because of this circuitry through here, inside that. It's not actually going through the switch here. So while I'm here, I'm gonna check my other one. Nothing, nothing, switch it on, connection, no connection, connection, and no connection. So now I'm ready to hook my battery up, and then I can power up my charge controller. Then I can hook a solar panel to it and test that also. So with the battery connected, we're ready to test it. So whenever you power up a charge controller, you always want to power batteries first, solar panels second. If you do solar panels first, battery second, you can damage it. It's usually in the instructions with it. So I'm going to also double check my wiring. Got my negative to my BT negative. 
positive to BT positive. Your other one is PV, which is your photovoltaic, which is your panel. So flip this on, and we should see this light up. And it's powered up. And these are automatic charge controllers. They can detect 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt power supplies, so or power battery packs. So we're going to see it come on. We can check our options. It shows our battery voltage, 16 and a half, which is what I'm charged at. So the sun's not being too cooperative right now, but I've got my solar panel sitting outside the garage door here in the sun. And I got my two cables connected and ran inside. So before connecting my panels to the controllers, I always like to double check my lines to make sure my voltage is correct. So I'm using purple as negative and white as positive. These are 24 volt panels. So they were reading 21 since the sun's not even out there. So that's correct. Now, if they were reversed and I accidentally had things plugged in the wrong way, we would see a negative 20. So purple's my negative. Make sure again your breaker's off. And I'm just going to wire these directly into my breaker for now since I don't have my flush mount quick disconnect. I'm going to get that ordered and then I can mount it to the edge of the box. Okay, so panels are connected. One last quick check with the meter. Make sure I'm negative and positive like I'm supposed to be. And I am. So this charge controller is an MPPT charge controller, which means that my panel voltage needs to be higher than the battery. And I'm at 24, 24 coming in, 12 going out, and that's perfect. That's right where it wants it. So we're going to flip this guy on. And we can see our panel voltage. So now we've got 20 panel volts coming in. And no watts because our battery is fully charged. So we need to discharge this battery a little bit. So now I'll button this up a little bit and we'll connect some load to this. See my inverter controls are here. I need to clean out this cut up. I'll probably like 3D print an edge for this or something nicer. You can see it's, it's well protected under here. So here's the inverter turned on and the displays. This is the incoming battery voltage. This is the outgoing AC voltage. And then I've just plugged in battery charger. So now I'm charging that up. So hopefully that helps you understand the basics of one of these. These can be any size, any shape, any components. Some of these I just happen to have on hand, so it's what I went with. And I like a lot more cooling capacity, which is empty space in the case. So that's why my case is a lot bigger than it needs to be. I'd rather have it bigger and run cooler than smaller and possibly overheat and cause the issues that go along with that. So in the next video, I'll wire up and install cigarette lighter outlet, some USB outlets, and the thermal sensor for the cooling fans and all that good stuff. So there we go. We're charging our tool battery off the power of the sun.